Good day, guys. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Caitlin, and I'm an American living in beautiful Sydney, Australia. Before moving over to Australia, there are definitely some myths about Australia that, as an American, I believe were true. And there are some flat out lies that I've been told by Aussies and just lies that Americans actually believe about Australia. Now, some of these are just Aussies having a little bit of fun and poking a bit of fun at Americans who really don't know anything about Australia. And some of this is definitely from the media, from cartoons that we've seen. Here are 10 lies that Americans have been told about Australia. So grab a bicky, grab a cuppa, and let's jump right into this video. So we're just going to get the first one, the most obvious one, out of the way, and that is that everything in Australia is trying to kill you. I have to say, as an American who's lived in Sydney for over a year now, I can say for certain that I have come across one deadly animal the entire time I've been here, and even then, it's not really that deadly to adults, and that is a redback spider over here. Well, it doesn't mean that Australia isn't a home to some deadly snakes and some venomous spiders and sharks and jellyfish and crocs, but overall, this isn't something that the average everyday Aussie is going to run into over here. No one's fighting a croc on their way to school or running from a brown snake on their way to work. You're probably not going to find a funnel web spider hiding in a woolly somewhere ready to bite you. The Americans have this overblown concept that you're constantly going to be running into deadly and dangerous animals over in Australia. If you're like me and you live in a pretty populated area, pretty close to a city, which the vast majority of Aussies do, you're probably not going to be running into deadly snakes and spiders on a regular basis. Will you see them? Most likely, yeah, especially if you're somebody who wants to get out and travel a little bit, go on bush walks, check out the beaches and whatnot, you might eventually run into a shark or a snake, or if you decide to go up to Darwin, be careful because there are crocs pretty much everywhere near water up there. But just because there are deadly animals here in Australia, it doesn't mean you will run into them all the time. And to be honest, most Aussies aren't really too concerned about running into a deadly snake or spider in everyday life. The next myth is that it is so expensive to live in Australia. Now, if you're going to look at Australia and every single other country in the world, yeah, Australia is pretty expensive, but compared to America and compared to the average 10 year cost that you would spend living 10 years in the States compared to 10 years in Australia, it's actually a little bit cheaper to live in Australia than it is in the States. Even though Aussies do have to pay a Medicare levy, or even if you choose to get private health insurance, it's so much cheaper and it covers so much more. If you get sick within the 10 year period in the States, you're going to have to pay quite a hefty bill for the vast, vast, vast majority of Americans. On top of that, health insurance in general costs more, plus you have deductibles that you have to pay. And besides that, food costs more. I just did a video recently on the grocery costs, and it's actually more for groceries over in the States than it is here in Australia. And a lot of people in my comments have pointed out that part of the reason this myth exists is because a lot of Americans come over to Australia and they just go to the touristy section. So of course, restaurants are going to cost more. The grocery stores in the CBD areas are going to cost more. If you're doing touristy things, it's just naturally going to be more expensive because they know that you'll pay for it because of the area that you're staying in. And more than likely, if you're visiting Australia, it's probably a once in a lifetime trip for a lot of Americans. So there's this perceived notion that it's so much more expensive to live in Australia, but really it's actually a little bit cheaper. So I'll be frank, you guys, I've had mostly women over in America ask this or point this out, and that's the notion that Aussies, particularly a lot of Aussie men, are either the typical surfer bro types, the whole blonde hair, blue eye, beach body types, or they're basically Mick Dundee, Crocodile Dundee. That's definitely the stereotype, and I know so many Aussies who are nothing like that at all. I recently married an Aussie who is nothing like that at all. At the end of the day, Aussies are just as varied and culturally different as Americans. Australia is a huge culturally diverse country. And there are people with different backgrounds, different religions, different races, and people grew up in different types of homes and different environments. You're going to find the good, you're going to find the bad, you're going to find a ton of people in between as well. So no, not all Aussies are the blonde hair, blue eyed surfer types, and not all of them are basically little versions of Crocodile Dundee. The fourth one comes so much from American commercials, and that is Australians drink Foster's beer. Because the slogan is Foster's, Australian for beer, and that's really the only sort of Aussie beer that Americans ever hear about or know about. 
when it comes to spirits and breweries and distilleries, typically a lot of Americans don't really know that much about Australian alcohol. I mean, I have a bottle up here of Yellowtail and there's only three major types of wines that you can get at pretty much any wine and spirit store over in the States. And I call them wine and spirit stores because that's what they were called in Pennsylvania where I was from. But you basically just get Yellowtail, 19 Crimes, and Fisheye. You're not going to get a huge variety of Australian alcohol, and that includes beer and wine as well. So a lot of Americans think that Aussies drink Fosters, and ironically, even though Fosters was invented in Melbourne, it was actually invented by two Irish-American brothers who came over. So technically, it's a beer that's made by Americans, even though it was made in Australia. But if you're coming to Australia, don't go to a pub and ask for a Foster's. If you're not sure, hell, ask the bartender. They can probably give you some great recommendations as to what to drink. But please don't waste your money. Don't waste your time on Foster's beer here. If you really want to try some classic beers, and I'm talking like old school beers, go for a VB. Go for a Four X's or a Tui's. I've even heard Cascade is really, really good. There are so many other beers you can have besides Foster's. Number five is that Outback Steakhouse is basically Aussie food. It's not whatsoever. Do Aussies love steak and barbecues? Yes, absolutely. I know so many Aussies who love steak, who love meat, who love to barbecue, who love to grill, as we also call it over in the States. But to be honest, things like the Bloomin' Onion really isn't a super traditional, popular dish over here in Australia. You're not going to find meat pies on any Outback Steakhouse menu, but that's one of the most iconic and classic Aussie foods without it being a brand of food like Shapes or Vegemite or Tim Tams. They might have like brownie sundaes and cheesecake, that generic sort of American dessert stuff on their menu, but a lot of Aussies over here when it comes to desserts, they think of things like pavlova and rum balls if it's Christmas and Christmas puddings and whatnot. That's more the traditional Aussie dessert than you will really find in any Outback Steakhouse menu. So no, Outback Steakhouse is not Aussie cuisine whatsoever. In fact, Outback Steakhouse was founded in Florida. It's very, very gimmicky, and to be honest, really has nothing to do with Australia other than the fact that they have steak on their menu. Number six is that Aussies live in the Outback. The vast, vast majority of Aussies actually live along the coast. Over 90% of Australians' land is considered uninhabitable, and the vast majority of that land is considered the Outback. The outback is dry and barren and inhospitable. It's not a place where you can grow food. Water is pretty scarce. So over 85% of Australians' population lives along the coast. And typically that's within a one to two hour drive of a beach of a huge body of water. You're really not gonna find that many Aussies that live in the outback. You might find a couple towns. I think the biggest town that's like within the outback area is probably Alice Springs. But really, you're not going to find a lot of Aussies who live in the Outback. The vast majority of Aussies don't live in the Outback. This next myth is that it is hot all year round in Australia. And I was guilty of this. I really did believe that Australia was a typically constantly hot, humid climate. But Australia is actually the same size as the mainland US. And you have to remember just how varied the climate is in the States. It's really varied over here as well. You'll find snow, you'll find hail, you'll find rainy places, you'll find dry places. You'll find mountains, you'll find beaches, you'll find desert, you'll find rainforest. There, there is a huge array of climates over here. It's not always going to be hot and sunny and for my Americans about 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit on a regular basis. Yes, the summers can get extremely hot in some places. If you're in Darwin or Perth, you're probably used to those 40 to 50 degree days when there's a huge heat wave in those areas. Whereas if you're in Tasmania, I remember I was there for a heat wave and it barely hit 90 degrees for my Americans. So there's a huge difference and the climates vary so much over here. You do get all four seasons over here depending on where you live. Or if you live in Melbourne, you get all four seasons in one day. But just like in the States, there are places where the climates vary and you're going to find that all across the country. It's not always going to be hot and sunny and perfect beach weather here. Now, this one's going to be a little controversial and just a tiny bit political, you guys. But number eight is that Australia is considered a nanny state. So with COVID and the lockdowns and whatnot, a lot of Americans saw Australia at its absolute worst, which is when people were locked down in their homes. They couldn't go more than five Ks away. 
They couldn't visit relatives or friends or family outside of that 5k radius. And another one that I hear all the time is, oh, Australia took away the guns. Guns are banned in Australia, so it's such a nanny state over there. To be honest, there's more freedom over here in Australia than there is in the States. Having the right to bear arms doesn't necessarily make you more free. Just because there were stricter rules enforced during COVID doesn't necessarily mean that you're more free in general either. That doesn't mean that you live in a nanny state. Let's be fair, America's a pretty nanny state as well if you're going to start comparing it that way. Like, America's actually one of the most invasive countries when it comes to freedoms and rights, even abroad. As an American abroad, I have to pay taxes and I have to declare to every single bank that I ever go to outside of the US that I'm an American citizen not just for regular generic record keeping purposes, but because America actually goes to all of these banks and requests records for any American that is abroad. So if you're not American and you've opened a bank account recently and wondered why you had to check a box maybe that said you're not American, that's why America actually has its hands in all of these corporate banks around the world. Thank you, FATCA. So no, I lived in Australia for a year now and Australia is more free than it is in the States. I definitely wouldn't call it a nanny state and when you look at the state of a lot of other countries in the world, it's kind of ridiculous to consider Australia a nanny state. I'm moving on to something a little bit more lighthearted and that is that you will see kangaroos and koalas everywhere in Australia. I've been here for a year and I haven't seen a single koala, which is actually kind of sad and upsetting because I do really want to see a koala in the wild at some point. I don't really know where to go to see those though, and maybe we're just visiting the wrong places or we're at the wrong times, but yeah, I haven't seen a koala at all in the year that I've been here, and we've traveled to quite a few places around New South Wales and Canberra. But as far as kangaroos go, you're mostly going to see them as roadkill, to be honest. You're going to find a lot of kangaroo that are dead along the side of the road that's probably going to be the first kangaroo you experience over here in Australia, which is a bit of a bummer. It's a bit of a letdown to see that, but it's the truth. Kangaroo are kind of similar to deer over in the States. They're kind of pests, and chances are the first time you see them, it'll probably be roadkill. And there aren't a ton of kangaroos everywhere. I can count on one hand the number of times I've seen kangaroo and still have fingers left over. Yeah, don't come over to Australia expecting to see kangaroos and koalas everywhere outside of the cities. It's a lot tougher to find them than you think. And the last one, let's just get this one out there because it made me laugh that somebody had actually asked me this when I moved over here. Toilets in Australia do not flush backwards. <laughs> I can't believe that's something that people are still asking, even though it's been years and years since The Simpsons came out with that episode about Australia. But no, the toilets in Australia do not flush backwards. In fact, it entirely depends on the mechanisms that are within your toilet, so they can flush either way. In the States, they can flush either way here. That is definitely something that The Simpsons made up and is not true. So that's it for this video, you guys. 10 lies that Americans have been told about Australia. Were you expecting these? Were there any that surprised you? Let me know in the comments down below, you guys. If you could, please hit the like and subscribe button, especially the like button, because apparently now YouTube also really, really cares about likes and comments more so than they did before. So if you did like this video, I'd appreciate it if you gave it a like, you guys, and I will see you in my next video.